Hello and welcome to Beauty as Fast TV. I'm Ritu Jha, and we are uh, extremely honored to have with us today uh, Thomas Yankovsky, all the way from Italy. And uh, Stephen uh, is um, has been a, a great uh, persona in the industry for many years now, and uh, he's just uh, you know it cannot be put into one box. He's got so many uh, aspects that we need to discuss today. So welcome, Stephen, to uh, Beauty as Fast TV, and thank you for making time for us. Thank you for having me. This is exciting, Ritu. I have known you for so long, and I'm really happy and excited to be uh, doing this interview together. Thank you. And I will quickly read out what Stephen, in, a, in, a, in very short, what Stephen is all about. So Stephen is an award-winning hairdresser and visual communication specialist with a diversified background as makeup artist. So it, just, it is just starting with the, as, as a makeup artist, photographer, stylist, graphic artist with expertise in marketing and brand development for over 30 years. Uh, you don't look that old, Stephen, uh, in the professional cosmetic industry and uh, originally from New York City. And where are you, Stephen, right now? And right now, I'm in, I'm, I'm in Milan, Italy. Oh, fantastic. So he is from New York City originally and uh, uh, cosmetology licensed in 1979. Stephen's career took off in the early 80s and as an artistic creative contributor, contributor to famous US salons and for collaborations with institutions such as I Magnum, department store salons and Nordstrom salons throughout the US. Uh, Stephen also has teamed up amongst other things with Sam Villa and how she designed Steen, inventing kamikaze cuts, you need to tell me what it's all about, dazzling crowds at major trade shows around the world. At a young age of 26, Stephen was awarded the International Advertising Start Award. Stephen was later presented in New York with prestigious World Masters Award, uh, Master of the Trade, elected by his international colleagues and peers. Stephen is presently creative and artistic consultant for NG Group and busy launching in North America, Europe, and around the world, his own professional hair color line called Big Professional. Congratulations, Stephen, on that. And, uh, and I, do, I don't want to miss this, uh, thanks to this, all this experience and exposure to North American, Central Asian and greater European market, Stephen has developed a sixth sense regarding the ability to identify future professional, cultural and consumer trends. This sensibility, along with his practical and artistic ta talent in creating some of the most beautiful, memorable communication campaigns and beauty images, has contributed to the long list of successful projects, making Stephen Thomas a sought after commodity and a team mentor to his colleagues. So welcome on board, uh, Stephen. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, um, actually Big was a line that I launched a few years ago and it was uh, very successful and I sold it. And now I'm on my own doing a new line and we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. It's really, really exciting. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I kept it as a surprise so that you yourself talk about your new line. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah. And, um, and so Stephen, um, as, as we start, you know, um, we would love to first understand what your, you know, your, your huge your career spanning over 30 years now um, with the number of things that you have done. What were, what you, uh, you know, can you indicate some major milestones to us? Well, let's see. Oh, when I, I, I'm originally from New York and then um, I started my hairdressing career very, very young. I was only 17, 18 years old. And I just uh, worked in many cities from New York, Chicago, um, and Seattle, working with some of the top hairstylists in North America as you know an assistant. So I spent many years, three, four, almost four years, just sweeping up hair and you know working with all of these amazing talents around North America. And then I translocated. I went to uh, Los Angeles, and in Los Angeles, I started my own career and I became. Um, the color director for Juan Duan Salon in Beverly Hills on Cannon Drive. 
And that was a really big game changer for me because I started working on all kinds of celebrities and uh, Hollywood stars and doing their color and things like that. So that was really, really exciting. And then also at a certain point, um, I had this wonderful connection and I started doing hair on board private jets between LA and New York and some of the other capitals, the fashion capitals around the world. Um, I would wear a tuxedo and I would uh, do all of these famous people. I would do all of their hair and makeup and I would do manicures and pedicures because I had my own little salon on board these 727 jets that were just completely redone. They were like, amazing inside. They had the bar area, they had the lounge, they had private state rooms, I had my salon inside, and it was like, oh, it was just millions and millions of dollars to redo these jets. And the limousines would drive up to the airplane and they would let um, the celebrities and the royalty off, of the, uh, off, uh, off at the jet, right below the jet. And there would be paparazzi outside taking all of the pictures as they came up onto the jets. And I would do, um, during the trip, I would do their hair and, and make them pamper them and do their makeup and, and then get them all ready for when they landed. And then all of the limousines would be lined up outside of the jet and um, all of the paparazzi taking their pictures and they all looked fabulous because I was on board to make them look wonderful. And I did that for many years and that was really, really exciting. And the next milestone. So how did you start with your, you know, the creative, the more creative you got, you know, the, you, you, got, you started making brands and, you know, these kind of things. I would like to know more about that. Yes, well, of course, um, at that time, I had met all kinds of very famous people, and I made very great connections, and I had this idea in the 1980s for a line of product, and I found sponsorship, and I found um, investors, and I created this incredible line. It was called OG, Beverly Hills OG International, and I created the campaign, and I had for the campaign, I, I decided to take all of these beautiful, beautiful women, and I had specially long wigs made up that were three meters long hair. So I had this beautiful long hair all wrapped around their naked bodies, and we did this beautiful photo shoot with all of these beautiful famous models with hair wrapped all around their bodies. And I had it, I had the campaign on Sunset Boulevard and on Times Square in New York and all of the big huge venues around the around the country in North America. And that campaign won many, many awards around the world because it was it was really recognized. And that kind of what was launched my career as an image man, so an image maker and brand developer. Um, I eventually sold that line and I've been working ever since for the last 30 years on creating new brands for other people and for myself and creating all of the brand product concepts and working with the laboratories and working with the product designers and packaging designers and fragrance people and all of the raw material people and then working with other famous artists, hairdressers and makeup artists from around the world and creating brands and launching them into the market and then either participating with them or selling them and starting something new. So I'm always starting all kinds of new projects and that's kind of what launched my career um, in the field of brand development and artistic creation um, artistic direction and creative direction. And this has been really, really exciting for me in a learning photographer, photography, learning the graphics. And so I'm kind of like 360, you know, like I, I've done everything from work in salon to working on private jets and on film and theater and um, in fashion shows and photo shoots. And oh, I've, I've shot over 150 co uh, magazine covers in the last 20 years. So it's been quite an experience of uh, just developing this whole sense of beauty in and being able to um, tap into all of this knowledge that I've gained over these years to be able to also understand some of the trends that are becoming in the near future. Awesome. So uh, amongst all this, you know, you, 
you produce so much work, so much creativity. And uh, what exactly makes you tick? How do you kind of every day, what is that that inspires you, keeps you going? Well, every day is a lot of work. I mean, we're at the computer. Sometimes I do like 14, 16 hour days, either at the computer or working on concepts and uh, design or working with other people. Um, and then also testing the products. I really love to test the products. So right now I'm also in our testing salon. So we have this huge facility and it's where we test all of the products and skincare and hair care and everything. And um, I really enjoy that. So um, what keeps me ticking is I'm just so curious. You know, I'm always looking around the world and I'm tapped in to all of the various channels of communication, all of the various social media, all of the various news. Um, I'm into uh, culture, religion, music, medicine, finance, um, uh, all of these things and tapping into all of this is really what stimulates me and helps me also see what's coming in in, into the, in the near future. Awesome. So um, you, uh, can you share some of your learnings, like if, uh, including your mistakes that you might have made and then how quickly you learn from them? That would be interesting for our uh, audience. Well, we would need several hours Ritu, for me to, to tell you about all of my mistakes that I have made over the, last, over the years. But um, I have to say, I learned much, much more from, from making mistakes than I have from all of my successes. Um, let's see, my, my biggest mistake is, I guess, that I've made several times in the past is uh, to be too convinced that my idea is the right one and the only way to look at something. Because sometimes I will get so like stuck on an idea, you know, on a concept and I'll be like a bulldozer and I'll just like go forward. And sometimes I will exclude some very important input from outside sources that are more objective, seeing things from the outside um, and in a more objective way, their input doesn't necessarily mean that I have to change my idea, but I have to evolve and modulate and conform my idea so that it has a greater, larger scope of being understood and also of being people being able to relate to it. Because sometimes you may have an idea in your own mind that seems really clear and you think to yourself, well, why can't other people understand what it is that I'm trying to, to convey when in my own mind, it just seems so obvious. And sometimes, you know, you can get stuck on that. And if you don't objectively listen, you know, put your emotions and your ego aside and listen to the, everyone's input and everyone's contribution. Because, you know, if you surround yourself with people that are, that want to contribute, you know, and, and are there because they're excited and they want to be a part of it, they're not going to say things, even though it may seem like it's going to hurt or it may seem like it's not, you know, worthwhile, but it always is worthwhile. And nobody has a stupid suggestion or a idiotic contribution. Everything somebody says is important and can influence in a better way whatever project you're working on. Sure, that's fantastic. That's really true. Like sometimes when we are excited about our ideas, we feel why don't other people get it? But then we'll have to reflect. Um, so um, as we just heard from you that you have diversified pretty early from being a creative artist to also a businessman, you know? So, um, and that's, that's something that lots of people, creative people struggle with. So did you struggle with it? How did you kind of come to own it? I still do struggle with it, Ritu. I do every day struggle with it. Just this morning, I came into the offices and I grabbed one of the girls and I said, come into the salon, I want to do your hair. You know, I, I just said, okay, let's do this, let's do that. And this morning I got some of my creative frustrations out on one of the girls that worked here. Of course, she looked fabulous afterwards, but I mean, I still every day feel like I have to 
get my, keep my hands, you know, in, in the, uh, you know, artisanal creative uh, uh, process is still really important. So sometimes it's really, really hard because when you're every day, like 10, 12, 14 hours at the computer, um, emails and communications and, you know, following up on everything and making sure everything is, it really is hard on a creative soul. Um, when a person has, you know, like a, a creative energy as our base, those, you know, mundane, but really, really important, you know, business aspects can really be very draining and, um, and can make you almost feel like kind of, you know, take all of your energy away, and make you feel sad sometimes. But you have to also remember the big picture, you know, because now when you, when you become a business person, you're no longer alone and everything that you do and the success of what you're doing affects and impacts so many people's lives that you have to take on that responsibility and the business side of it becomes really as important, if not more than the creative side. Absolutely. So now going to the creative side, the collections, you know, I've seen your collections, uh, Stephen, you have amazing collections, yeah. like they are, more inclusive, they explore territories that not all hairdressers I've seen uh, exploring. So I would love to, uh, you know, find out what, what inspires you when you're doing these collections and how do you go about them? Oh, well, you know, I think just the world inspires me. Um, people inspire me, the world inspire me, inspires me. Right now we're in a huge uh, global, evolution and change. Um, we, starting in 2020, um, the world is really, really changing drastically and dramatically. And um, also women and how they feel about themselves, how they feel about their beauty is changing to such an extreme and, and huge degree that I've actually been on uh, almost a two year, uh, phase of just observation. I haven't really produced any new creative uh, projects like photo shoots or video work, uh, only a few little things to keep what's necessary to be done to keep you know a brand going and to stimulate interest. But really creative projects that you know me for that I've done in the past has been really put aside for this period of observation um, because I think that beauty and the way we communicate and live beauty is in a huge state of transformation and the way people perceive and look at beauty images and beauty promotions is going through this huge change and so I am formulating right now and I am, I'm, I'm soon, soon something's going to come out in a creative way that I think is going to go with this evolutionary change that society is going through. But right now, for example, I'm in the process of the simulation and, um, and manifestation that is going to then materialize in my next creative uh, endeavor, which I think will probably be created before the end of the year. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it, Stephen. So, uh, and you have worked across continents. You have worked uh, in the US, in Europe, and of course in, uh, New in China. So um, how do you, you know, what, what's, what's, you know, what appeals to you about all this and how do you like bring it all together? Well, yeah, every continent, um, you know, hairdressers and beauty artists, uh, Globally, we are all kind of from the same material. We are all, we're all the same sensitive, empathic, kind of creative, loving souls. I believe that professional, beauty professionals are, are light worker angels on the earth. And our purpose here is to help others feel more beautiful and feel better about themselves and more loving towards themselves and with themselves. And that's a very important, big responsibility. So as far as beauty professionals around the world and what I've gained from my exposure to beauty professionals around the world is that we're all kind of made from the same pasta. <laughs> but 
cultures around the world, that's a whole different story. And the, the historical influence of cultures has really been a huge impact on me. And, and living that input and, and feeling that sensitivity because our eyes see according to our cultural and historical programming. Our eyes perceive according to how we've been programmed and how we've been raised and how we've been influenced about what with what is around us and surrounds us and, and that daily subconscious input. So what may look beautiful to me as a North American and now as a European may be completely different to how someone else sees physical human beauty in India, for example, or in China, or in Russia, in different dark places of the world. So it's very, very important, especially when I'm traveling, to be very sensitive to what their perspective is. So before I go anywhere, I always get an update and I go into an in-depth research historically, what has been considered beauty within that culture and how that has evolved so that I'm much more prepared to adapt my talents and adapt my perceptions to the role of where I'm going to be presenting or collaborating. That makes a lot of sense. And it uh, could be amazing to watch you when you come to India. Well, I hope to come to India soon. We have to find a new distributor for my line there. Absolutely, we will. So I'm um, now uh, coming to your line. And before I come to your line, I would love to hear something about Love Inc. I like the name so much, Love Inc. How did that love come about? And then, then we would love to talk about your product line, which you are introducing. Well, Love Inc., uh, I registered the uh, Love Inc. Um, uh, logo probably about 25, almost 30 years ago, because like I said, uh, prior, I really believe that the beauty professional is a light worker. I believe that the beauty professionals are angels on this earth to help other people feel better about themselves and, you know, live happier lives. And we're here, we're empathic, we're empathic, giving, loving, creative souls that want nothing more than to help others feel better and beautiful. So that for me is a great, uh, uh, I call it the industry of love, the beauty industry. And so Love Inc, Love Incorporated just seems natural for me as a name for my company. And so um, I love, I, and I, 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 it's timeless and it really represents who we are as beauty professionals and what our industry should be all about and what our motivation should be coming from. So that's why I called it Love Inc. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot the other part of the question. The other part was about your new brand. I'm sorry? The new brand that you're launching, the new line. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, anyway, so I decided I'm going to break loose and go crazy. And for two years, I've been working with five different Italian laboratories, color laboratories, to create this new hair color brand called Fucking Amazing. I know the name is very, very, really risky, but really fun and exciting because it is truly amazing. Mm -hmm. So I have created these new formulas for lightening and pigmenting lightened hair. So it's a system designed around blonding. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think of blonding, we think of California blondes and golden blondes and everything, but the actual technique of blonding, which is the new massive uh, hair coloring technique that is coming into the beauty industry is all about lightening and then pigmenting pre-lightened hair. That is blonding. So let's say, um, Ritu, we can start from uh, an Indian hair that is at a level two or level three, you know, very dark brown. And let's say we take our lightening products and we lighten that level two 
to a level five or six. And then we add pigment to that pre-lightened hair to make it look really beautiful and have gorgeous highlights. But the final result may be only a level four. So maybe only two levels lighter than the original shade. That is still considered blonding because we are lightening the hair and then we are adding pigment and depth into the lightened hair, even if our end result is not really a blonde shade. But the process to arrive to the final result is a blonding process. Okay, so the line is for blonding, 360 degree blonding products and techniques to be able to lighten hair in the most amazing ways and then pigment this, the lightened hair, the pre-lightened hair in ways that are new to the industry. Um, as an example, for the last 30 years or almost 40 years, we have been working with hair color systems and hair color brands that are based on total coverage of white hair. Actually, we've been, we've, we, we judge the quality of a hair color on its capacity to cover, completely neutralize and cover whatever color is pre-existing underneath. So the white hair or the gray hair and, and leaving the hair, of course, shiny and healthy looking but completely 100% coverage is how we've judged if a hair color line is a quality color line. Well, so much of this is changing and especially in the last two years, since 2020 and the first lockdowns. Well, apart from a huge, a, a huge growth in home coloring, but also a huge growth in women falling in love again with themselves at the stage of life in which they find themselves, no longer trying to grasp on what was once when they were maybe 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years before they started growing in the white hairs, but actually falling in love again with who they are at the stage of their lives that they are in. I mean, it's been unbelievable the success of the YouTube videos where you see hair colorists transforming what was once the white hair grow out with the dark hair lengths and taking and lightening up all of that dark hair lengths to create an overall platinum or light gray or salt and pepper effect that is totally natural and bringing back women back to their natural beauty that would be part of their natural essence at this phase in their lives. So it's no longer this huge taboo of having white or gray hair. Actually the gray hair fashion that was in for the last five years has really softened this sense of not being attractive if you have white or if you have gray hair. So what is going to happen? Maybe it will happen a little bit after in India. It'll probably take a little bit longer, but in the Western world, in North America, in Europe, and in Northern Europe, and you're going to see a return to lighter colors for older women. And the concept of brown 100% coverage colors is only going to be seen relative to store-bought or supermarket colors, or you know, maybe lower quality professional hair coloring. And you will see a new resurgence of women over 40 with lighter hair colors. So taking their gray hair and their salt and pepper hair and creating lighter, more natural blends with much less line of demarcation and grow out. And this is going to be the next huge global trend, which is starting in North America and in Europe already becoming very, very, very important. So the fact of being able to, because nature lightens us as we grow older. 
God and nature lightens us as we illuminate, as we grow older in our age, in our lives. We, come, we become lighter, we become more luminous, our hair becomes more white. We, it's, it's kind of it's symbolic as to who and what we are becoming also as, as if we are aware beings and living our lives in the most aware, luminous way possible. So if nature and God is bringing light and lightening us as we grow older, then we can also keep and, and color women and keep them beautiful and also soft and, and keep them also gorgeous and colored, but lighter and more luminous with less lines of demarcation in the regrowth. Because you're even seeing also on, on, on TikTok and on Instagram where they follow ladies and the wind separates their hair and you can see this white line or this salt and pepper line as the wind blows open the hair and it's become almost like a kind of like a joke or, or a way of, you know, uh, of uh, playing, making fun of a certain kind of uh, way of presenting yourselves. And so it's, it's really women that are more aware of trend, more aware of style, more aware of, you know, their place in life at the age they are at are going to start to lighten their hair and have final looks that are much more luminous and light and with much, much less signs of demarcation. Unless, of course, you're going to use fashion colors like copper or, you know, violet or, you know, more intense, brilliant shades. But that's for ladies that want to, you know, you know, uh, want to like, how do you say in English? I'm forgetting my English words, but they, they, they want to like show off and be show, and show how, you know, that, okay, those are the, the rare exceptions. When women, I have this gorgeous friend, she's 62 years old and she has a dark green base and her lengths are bright yellow and she looks fabulous. She looks fabulous because it's, she's living it in the fashion, you know, kind of wanting to like be luminous and be different in an intentional way, not in a way, she's not coloring her hair in a way to try and recapture something that once was that is no longer. Right. You understand the concept? Like trying to recapture a hair color that she had when she was 19 years old because she doesn't want to feel like an older mature woman. She's excited and happy about being an older mature woman and she wants to even exalt that in a very colorful, playful and, and fashionable way. So this evolution in personalization and lightening and, and going with nature and lightening hair and putting beautiful colors and multi-dimensional colors in hair, even for women that are mature, even in their 60s and 70s, is becoming the norm, it's becoming accepted. And actually it's going to become important that hairdressers follow this movement and promote it. Otherwise they will be left behind. Yes, Stephen, actually I must tell you that this whole uh, trend of blending the grays and the white has already been there in India uh, Great. for the past few years, yes, in the, in the leading salons, at least in Delhi, I've definitely uh, seen it happen. And uh, I can see lovely graphics uh, in the background, uh, Stephen. I would love to know what you're doing for the men because I can see a lot of interesting graphics of men featuring in your... Uh, wow. That's really exciting too. I must say that the men, especially here in Europe, are going crazy with blonding. I mean, they are going crazy. We, we, it's much easier for us to find male models today than it is sometimes to find the female models to make them, you know, these brilliant, bright, exciting colors. So I have to say that men, especially you see a lot of sports figures and music personalities and a lot of celebrities going into all of these great blonding looks that uh, is really stimulating the, the male culture to really get into color a lot more. And I foresee that in the future, especially in metropolitan areas, in areas that are much more trendy, we are going to see a lot of men's hair coloring. I mean, but obvious men's hair coloring, just really intense, colorful and bright colors for men. Awesome. 
so uh, this will lead us to my next question about you know you give us some clue about the trends approaching trends not only in hairdressing but makeup and products what kind of products do you think are going to happen in the future well products the most important thing is okay there's going to be two main uh, uh you know, care categories there's going to be the technological so everything that is super high performance high technology which is the new line, for example, the new line that I um, created, I've created here, the fucking amazing line. We're very, very, it's very oriented towards super high technology, the latest in raw materials from the, from the most exciting and most important laboratories. So high performance, high technology. And then on the other scale, we are seeing a huge, huge surgence of clean beauty where we had once organic beauty or natural beauty, but the problem with organic is that there are so many people with high sensitivities to organic ingredients and essential oils. And we're finding lots more people with itchy skin and breakouts on their scalp and things from organic products. So not necessarily organic is good for everyone where the most important thing now is biotechnology, which means biocompatible formulations that are eco-sustainable. Now that does not necessarily mean organic. That can be naturally derived products that then have gone through uh, you know, technological processes in production and in laboratories, but they are now um, they no longer have allergens or they no longer have elements that people can have sensitivity <clears throat> or potential allergens to what were, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, natural ingredients or organic ingredients can sometimes be allergen and can create rash or irritation or sensitivity to skin to people that are particularly sensitive to or aller allergic, you know, in particular, so, or, or particularly stressed. So clean beauty are modern technological uh, formulations that are biocompatible, biocompatible, so the biotechnology. So you can also have natural origin products where they have been processed, refined, they no longer have allergic potential within their composition. And also sometimes the refinement makes them even more functional. So we will have now this huge evolution of clean beauty, naturally derived biotechnology that creates biocompatible formulations that are also eco-sustainable. A, a, a good definition, actually, very comprehensive. And I also am wondering how you think, what do you think about, uh, you know, AI being used in uh, beauty, in the beauty industry? Well, of course, AI is a good thing if it's used in a good way and in a right way. And AI can be a very dangerous thing if it's not used in the right way. So, of course, uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence, in our processing laboratories, finding ways with cleaner energy to create more biosustainable and biocompatible formulations and raw materials is, 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 is a wonderful thing. And that's what's creating this new surge of clean beauty products. So without the technology and without the artificial intelligence, without that kind of knowledge applied, within the field, we would, we would not be able to arrive to all of these refined formulations. So that in its sense is, is very important and is a very big part of what the next beauty wave is. Awesome. So now uh, about the trends uh, as far as, you know, styling and we've already spoken a bit about the coloring bit. So we would love to know about the styling and the cuts that you imagine are gonna happen. And also the makeup, if, if you want to talk about a little bit. Oh, well, the thing is, you know, there's no more specific trend. Like I said, the most important 
global trend is the lightening of hair as women mature. So even if you do color hair, you're going to color hair in a multi-dimensional way. So it has many different plays of color. You're going to use more transparent colorations that are not going to completely cover and annihilate whatever's underneath, but you're going to work more with what is underneath. So if you have salt and pepper hair, you're going to use colorations that are going to work on the lighter hair in one way and on the darker hair in another way so that you have these beautiful light and dark blended combinations. You're going to like do, you know, intermix colors together. You're going to create different colors on the base and, and have different highlights towards the tips. So the more multi-dimensional the color, the more high level the color is considered to be. So if you are one that wants to really show how you are uh, as connected with trend and you want to show off and make people understand that you are, work within a certain category and a certain economical sphere, you're going to have much more luminous, multi-dimensional color than someone that maybe is not so aware of trend and maybe doesn't have the economical possibility to, to, uh, to have that kind of service. So we're unfortunately, but it's the fact of life, there's gonna be much more segregation in beauty as well. So we're gonna have much more division between who can and who cannot. And that will be even more evident in how one presents themselves. And so once hair color, the multidimensional aspects of that color will be also a status symbol, like having a Gucci bag or having a Prada shoe, you know? So, I mean, this is pretty much what is going to be the main major global influence as far as trend. Now, what color? Every color, because whatever color looks good with you, whatever you identify with in that phase of your life, and is going to be the right color for you. There's no more right or wrong color. If you feel good in it, if, it, if you feel happy with that color, if it gives you joy and it helps you express who you are in a better way, then it's in fashion and it's the right color for you. Um, haircuts, the same thing, hair design and haircuts and textures. There's no more one degree of fashion or one specific cut for a season. Of course, we'll see major larger trends where we'll see more maybe shorter bob cuts over the next year, two years with some texture and, and flow inside with deep a base and lighter tips. We're also seeing a lot of, of the opposite. We're also seeing lighter bases and darker tips. It's gonna take a bit longer for it to come into any kind of a mainstream fashion. But anyways, people are attempting this kind of new influx of look into the industry. The half and half, we're seeing a lot of that. Half one color, half another color in, amongst the young, trendy uh, YouTubers and things like that. So really much anything goes. It depends on who you are, how you feel, and what you think represents you in the best way. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Stephen, would you like to talk about makeup before we move on to our last question? Makeup, everything from drag queen style to minimalism is in wherever you are. And it's so lovely to see though, also within like you, like, you know, people since, since the first lockdown, since 2020, everybody is going crazy. Hair color is going crazy. Cuts are going crazy. Everybody's trying new things. They're going out and getting colors and you'll see and wearing makeup in all kinds of different ways. Everybody's been addicted to the drag queen makeup that's been going online and all of these other different trends. And it's wonderful. You'll go into a club or you'll go into a restaurant and you'll see a group of people at a table and there's everything from drag queen to minimalism to pink hair to blue hair to white hair and gray hair everything all together and it's lovely i love it this is one of the things that i really support and agree with in this phase of our beauty evolution awesome so uh finally before we sign off uh, uh Stephen, the last two years have 
been um, unprecedented is a small word. I mean, it, it's it's been like a, a thunder in the face of humanity, you know, where we are shaken up and told to wake up and, you know, reflect and... Uh, I hope so. Yeah. And so how has the, this been for you, the COVID pandemic phase? And what, what have been your learnings and how do you see the industry changing now? Oh, wow. We'll have to do a, a, an interview just on that one. Um, the thing that, uh, that really has awakened me in the last two years is our reality is not how the reality of reality is not what we think it is. And um, we are being subjected to uh, a lot of uncertainty. And we have world governments pushing us into a very, very difficult and challenging corner that humanity is going to have to decide how and where it's going to direct all of this change and all of this upheaval. Um, I do hope that we will take everything that's happening to us in a way that's going to make us better people, more accepting and loving people and of, uh, of each other and not take in blind faith everything that is communicated to us through the mass media and through um, the, the power of government and also some of the big social media moguls. But live true to our hearts, try to be objective, listen and learn to everything possible. Don't believe in un, only one uh, source of information and do and follow in the best way you can your heart and what your heart and your soul tells you and hopefully we'll all turn out okay. But, but reality isn't as we have always thought it to be. And just accept that and let's try and mold reality in the best way possible with all of this uncertainty towards the future with a little bit more awareness. Yes, definitely. In India, uh, Stephen, we've seen a trend of, you know, go to home salons, you know, like, uh, professionals visiting homes for certain services and things like that. Okay. Yeah, well, I've also created a portable color station. Beautiful. So this is, this is a station that contains everything a hair colorist needs yeah. to be able to go to any location mm -hmm. and do and create their, their, their work. Oh, fantastic. We would love to share this picture for all across. So thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us today on Beauty as Past TV. Um, and uh, it's hashtag global trendsetter series that we are doing. And uh, you are one of our trendsetters for sure. Um, it was amazing talking to you. And we wish you all the best for the launch and the rollout of this new brand. Thank you so much. Look for it and help us find a great distributor in India so I can come soon and we can all dance and have a great time together and be creative and create color and light. The line is called fucking amazing. And I'm Stephen Thomas Jankowski. And thank you so much, Ritu, for this gorgeous, wonderful opportunity to share with you and your wonderful company what we're all about. Thank you. It's a huge, huge pleasure for us. Thank you so much.